When the contract DLC was first announced, many players' eyes were drawn to the futuristic looking compact EMP launcher shown off in the newswire. Unfortunately, our hopes were a bit too high though, and the weapon ended up being just a blatant reskin of the current compact grenade launcher, using the same animations and projectile physics except the grenades were EMP instead of explosive. Which left players with much more to be desired from a futuristic sci-fi style of weapon. So what I have done is completely redesigned how the weapon works in an effort to increase its utility so it doesn't have very limited uses for a very expensive weapon, and on top of that just make the weapon feel more fun instead of what is essentially an ammo type that could have been added to the current grenade launchers. Robbery at Rockford Hills. Before we begin with the new design, let's first discuss where the compact EMP launcher went wrong. And well, where do I even start? In terms of its design, it's just unimaginative, like I just mentioned, it's just a compact grenade launcher with EMP grenades in a different model, it's nothing we haven't seen before in terms of its mechanics. It also just doesn't do its job very well, the travel time and trajectory of the projectiles makes it hard to hit anything that isn't either right in front of you or moving at a snail's pace, and if the vehicle is already slowed down or stopped, then what is even the point of EMPing them? The cost of the ammo for the launcher is also another issue, these are non-lethal EMP grenades, yet they cost the equivalent to that of lethal explosive RPG rockets, and that is after you shell out almost $500,000 to purchase the weapon. I get that it's a technologically advanced weapon, which could be why the ammo costs more, but it's just silly that a non-lethal is more expensive than a lethal weapon, especially when it functions like the old compact grenade launcher from the Bikers update. So knowing those weaknesses that the weapon has, with its rework I set out to do two major things. Number one, a complete redesign of how the projectile functions, from a slow lob of a grenade to a fast moving laser like beam similar to that of the open atomizer to replicate a pulse being launched at a vehicle. Number two, I changed how the ammo count works in favor of a more suitable recharge timer instead of a reload to fit the new projectile physics. And this also eliminates the weird cost of ammo for the weapon and serves to eliminate one of the most annoying parts of the EMP launcher, having your vehicle stun locked over and over again because you could just keep spamming one vehicle and making it so they can't move. And stun locks are never a fun mechanic. And for some smaller changes, I replaced the sound and added in some lightning effects to make it feel more powerful. Going over the changes in the files now, let's first go over the changes to the weapon itself and how it works, and after that we'll discuss the recharge system. The lifetime from vehicle lifetime and lifetime after impact values were all heavily decreased to 0.125 and 0, meaning after you fire the weapon, the time it takes to blow up on its own is much, much shorter. The current launch speed of the compact EMP launcher grenade is a measly 25, we need that to be laser fast, so I upped it to 10,000. And to explain this in layman's terms, range for projectiles in this game is a mix of the launch speed and the lifetime, so the new projectile for the EMP launcher will travel for 0.125 seconds at that 10,000 launch speed value before blowing up on its own. I'm not exactly sure what the unit is for launch speed, I'm assuming it's meters per second or something, but I'm not exactly positive. The time to reach target I don't think matters as much, but I lowered it from 2 to 0 0.250 just in case it does have something to do with it. Another few important ones are the gravity factor, ricochet tolerance, and the friction multiplier. Gravity factor is how much the projectile will drop after it's fired, which is obviously a lot with the current version. Ricochet tolerance and friction multiplier I believe have to do with what the projectile does after hitting something, which doesn't really matter as much because of the next change that I'm going to talk about, but those are all brought down to zero entirely because we want a straight line shot with no drop to it. One of the biggest complaints about the compact EMP launcher is how it doesn't blow up on impact, instead you have to actually hit a vehicle if you want it to blow up instantly, and because of this you can't really use the blast radius to your advantage on a moving vehicle. 
Well, it's literally just two words that you have to add to the projectile flags to enable that, which are destroy on impact and apply damage on impact. Just those two words and changing the lifetime after impact to zero makes the projectile blow up on impact. And finally, for some aesthetic changes, I gave it the railgun sound effect to make it sound more beefy and powerful, the railgun muzzle flash to add the lightning after every time you fire, and the firework launcher trail effect to give the projectile a white glow while it's traveling. And instead of the grenade launcher reticle, I changed it to the normal assault rifle crosshair because it no longer functions like a grenade launcher. And when all that is said and done, you now have a super fun EMP weapon that feels fun to use and is a worthwhile purchase for your half a million dollars rather than a lousy grenade launcher. With this new version, you are also able to lock onto targets on foot. I did, however, lower the lock-on range similar to the Atomizer, so this would make for a pretty good oppressor killer in auto-aim if they ever did get too close to you. But because it now functions similar to the Railgun and is now much easier to hit targets with, I had to make careful considerations regarding its range. Since it is a compact EMP launcher after all, its range is very limited, with even shorter range than the up and Atomizer, as you can see by the following clip. By now, you've probably noticed that the rebalanced EMP launcher does not reload anymore. That is because it operates on a recharge timer now. It now has the infinite ammo flag, so you never run out of ammo. The flags launched and atom reload were removed. Launched actually had to do with getting the weapon to fire properly as something that wasn't a grenade launcher. But the atom reload flag removal tells the game not to activate the reload animation after the clip is empty. The display recharge time HUD flag was also added, that puts the bar at the top right of the screen to let you know how much longer you have to wait before firing again, it's the same bar that the stun gun has. And the last flag is only fire one shot, which is only there to prevent the weapon from firing multiple times in a row if you hold down the shoot button. And about that recharge time, this is where the balance comes into play, with the much more effective version of the launcher, the time between shots was at 1.22 seconds before, but since it now performs much better, there needed to be a weakness to it, so the recharge time is 15 seconds. Which means if you happen to EMP a vehicle, you won't be able to EMP it again for another 15 seconds, and if you miss, well, you also have to wait 15 seconds before trying again. Unfortunately, I was not able to implement the instant reload prevention like the multiplayer stun gun has. That is a much more complex feature that is not in the files that I have access to, but ideally it would be needed on this weapon, otherwise it would be a lot more OP than it should be. But that is my rebalanced version of the compact EMP launcher, a version that is not only much more effective at what it does, but also so much more fun to fire and use. And this rebalance was entirely designed based off of other mechanics that already exist in the game, just combining a few of them together, and we have this. We have a little bit of the ray gun, a little bit of the rail gun, and a little bit of the stun gun with the recharge timer all put together into one. If this was implemented into GTA Online, it would be a very effective counter for the new Imbani Tech vehicles, and if you're good, you could probably hit some impressors with it as well, or if jets or helicopters got too close, they could fall victim to its blast. There is one thing that I did want to add, but unfortunately I just couldn't figure out how to make it work, and that was a charge effect where you would have to charge it for like a second or two before firing to get the maximum effect. Kind of like the Kanjali railgun, but I couldn't figure out a way for it to work unfortunately. If I could have gotten that to work, I would have made it so that if you don't charge it, the projectile is really slow and doesn't have much range to it, but if you do charge it up all the way, it's got that same speed than the one I showed off now, with increased range. If you are on PC and you want to try this out for yourself, I currently have a mod pending approval on GTA5mods.com. Once it's ready, I will post a link in the description so you guys can download and play around with this yourself. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Let me know in the comments what you want to see me rebalance next. These are always fun videos to make. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.